HLS as a, as a standard is perfectly reasonable. The reality is that to stream content to everywhere today, HLS just made a lot of sense for us as a company. Um, and so the HLS JS project is the basis of all of our web players today. It does a really nice job of transmuxing the transport stream files into fragmented MP4, which can be handed off to the media source extensions, and it, it just works well. KHLS, I completely agree, is a, yeah. a well-defined standard. It's been used for quite some time now. The problem, though, is once you run into the digital rights management pieces, and uh, at least in certain circumstances right now when using HLSJS, you really can't get around the DRM piece. And, but it depends on whether you have content that needs to be protected or you don't have content. Like if, if you don't have content protection issues, HLSJS is a good way to go. Yeah. Owning all of our own content, we're able to get away with secure delivery with AES-128 encryption and SSL of all the streams, and that has been deemed good enough for what we're doing for now. I back up Jeff and what he's saying. It's working for Viacom, but it's working for their particular situation. Like you're, you're, not, you're not carrying Hollywood-based exactly. content that has DRM rights. If anything, the, the requirements for DRM are going to accelerate. DRM is a fractured landscape today, so supporting common encryption is about the most efficient way of, we have of dealing with that encryption. And also, when you look at the... Uh, I'm an engineer. I like efficiency. So what's happening when you use HLSJS to play TS segments in a browser, you're having to remux it in JavaScript on the fly in order to play it back. And if you were handling uh, uh, CMAF-based segments or ISO-based media file format segments, you could feed them directly into the source buffer, relieve yourself of uh, some of the CPU computation that's happening there. So yes, it works, but I think my vision is towards a, a cleaner workflow. I think HLS CMAF, I don't know if, if you're looking at that, but that would certainly be more efficient from, from the player side while still preserving the workflow and the ad insertion that it might be having with the HLS manifest. With some of our kids and family brands, we deal with a lot of older devices. And you know, it is with iOS 10 is where CMAF HLS is first supported. And we deal with a lot of iOS 7 and iOS 8 devices, which that's not going to be a possibility for us. Of course, HLS, HLS, lots of people know how to work with HLS. They have workflows for it. But um, there are new use cases, for instance, for low latency live delivery that I believe MPEG uh, Dash can do better just because of the design. Things like um, uh, efficient manifest update that uses event rather than pulling the manifest every time when you do uh, live streaming and you don't know how long the um, session go on. And CMAF brings basically some of those features, including uh, um, common encryption, including the even message box that allows basically signaling um, the device to update the manifest to HLS. So I think it would be interesting to see how the market's going to evolve um, when um, uh, Apple devices become updated with iOS 10 um, industry using the CMAF what uh, manifest format they will be used and which ones will become do dominant. And I think the new use cases will be um, the test, the domain, the area that basically defines whether Dash will be used more or HLS.